When he finished his UVA career, he was ranked first all-time in starts with 134 games and first in games played with 138, second in three-point shooting percentage at just under 41%. And he's the first Cavalier to win an NCAA tournament game in all four years. Many of you know him as Callie Cool, London Prentice and his childhood friend and current business manager, Masai Ephraim, hang out with us to talk basketball and how they maintain a brotherhood. Welcome to Locker Room Access. This is Mark Jerome, joined by my partners, T.W. Huang and Dougie Fresh-Smith. Welcome to the show. So glad to have you. Appreciate you guys having me. Callie Cool, where are you getting your touch-ups now? My barber is cutting from inside of the apartment, so I went in there with a mask on. Just wanted to start fresh for the quarantine because my hair grows back super fast. So by the time we're out of here, I might have the throwback. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> when did you cut it? I cut it like two weeks ago. First time since my sophomore year of college at UVA is when I had last had this low cut. So still getting used to it. That had to be a and talk, a little talk bit. about for a minute, where were you prior to – uh, coming back to the stateside G League. Yeah, so I um, I did training camp with the, with the Trailblazers, um, made it to the end of that, <clears throat> and then I got waived. And so then I was just kind of waiting around trying to see what was going to happen, either the G League or go overseas. And I ended up taking, <clears throat> excuse me, an offer overseas um, in Istanbul, uh, Turkey. Um, I played a couple months there. Um, wasn't necessarily working out the way that we expected it to between me and the coach. And, and so we kind of just had like a mutual agreement of I kind of wanted to just be back home and be back in the States and, and give that, that NBA a push. Cause I just felt like after the trailblazers mini or mini camp, I felt like I had a good opportunity to make the team. Um, there was some money problems with it. Like they didn't have enough money to sign another person and things like that. Not necessarily knowing that I would have made that spot, but kind of uh it's kind of at a disadvantage from the jump so um I kind of wanted to just come back and, and feel like I I was ready to to make another strong push and I still feel like I am so um I, I just kind of wanted to devote myself to being back in the states and, and pushing to get back into the NBA. Hey wh while you were with the Wizards Drew Kennedy I believe is a scout with the Wizards Drew uh -huh. Kennedy who played for UVA who was a student athlete for UVA years yeah, ago. Yeah yeah do you, has there been any communication between the two of you? Has he given you advice? Um, no, so I haven't. I haven't seen him. Um, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't had any communication. I don't think. Um, but there's so there's just so many people that have been like my head coach coached at Maryland, and he was there when we played against them uh, my first two years. And so everybody kind of is in this, that DMV area, so everybody's kind of familiar with each other, familiar with UVA and that stuff like that. So. Um, I kind of ran into a lot of familiar faces, whether they just have been, we've played against them or they've coached against me or things like that. So um, obviously being in DC has been cool for that, for sure. So you run into big, run into big TJ, Ted Jeffries? <laughs> no, I actually haven't ran into Ted. I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't. He's up there. He's in, he's in the DMV. I was going to yeah. say, when, you, when you're making these big life decisions, um, who who are you usually conferring with to to make that call? Uh, well, that the, the person that's about to get on this is one of, is is one of them for sure. Masai is like just one of my one of my best friends from like eight years old, where we we started off as a. Oh, I'll let him talk. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the devil, huh? Yeah, no, but he's definitely one of them. And then my parents, um, obviously, are, are two. Uh, big guys that uh, two two p people that I li uh, look up to and, and kind of want to hear from them and and then obviously God like God is just somebody that that is that that last push over the top if I need some if I need some clarification or some clarity I just pray on it at night pray on it all day and, and kind of sleep on it and then wake up the next like the next morning and hopefully I have some more clarity and I think that's because of him. So talk about, and Masai just joined, for those people listening, Masai just joined the conversation. Um, so talk about that relationship. You know, the, I, I, when I was talking to Masai on the phone, I was like, I would love to make that the comparison to LeBron and his crew, to what you do with Masai and your crew. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I, obviously different scale, different level, but it's our own Virginia way, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Right now, well, talk I, about I that. Was just talking talk about, about that. I was just, it's, we were just talking about that actually and how um, – it was it's crazy how LeBron has just come up with all of the, his core group from from 
from day one. And well, I mean, that's that's kind of how we've always wanted to do it. Obviously, LeBron is LeBron, and he's able to to have that higher, the, the bigger scale, and be able to do different things and stuff like that. But that's he. I, w- I wouldn't even like like for LeBron. I feel like that's all his family. Like they would he would qualify them as brothers, and like Usai is nothing but a brother blood to me. Um, so uh, regardless of where I go, he's going to be coming with me, or he's uh, we're going to be setting him up for for something else, and, and just kind of just doing that. So we've always had that understanding from a, from from being younger that that's just how we were going to do things. And all right, so. Changed. So Masai, when when London's away in Istanbul or France or wherever, how how are you keeping up with the games? How are you able to watch um, um, and know what's going on? France was actually easier to keep up with because they um, there was like a streaming service that I was able to log into and kind of watch the games that way, and they were like pretty good about their stats and everything. So um, that wasn't too bad, and I actually got out there a decent amount I had like uh, some quality opportunities to go out there and be with him um dirt like for a decent amount of time so that wasn't bad Istanbul um I didn't get to make it out there and their stat and like video situation wasn't as easy so um and it was a shorter stance so it wasn't you know wasn't as accessible so I didn't get to really do that but um France wasn't bad and we were you know I message we were talking all the time anyway so I never really felt uh disconnected from the process and we were able to talk about literally game the game pretty much like I know when he had a good game I can run my mouth um and <laughs> I can you know I could be a little softer about it but it was it wasn't bad at all um it it wasn't what I thought. It's, I'm happy that he's back for sure. Happy that he's back in the states is going to make things a lot, a lot easier because the G League and and the NBA and all those things, the apps are amazing. I can literally watch the games on my phone. And and let's let's talk about let's rewind a little bit in terms of so you you know London picks Virginia. Obviously, that's a long way from home for you. What what was that like when when London left? What was that like for you? He was like, already on the East Coast. Well, yeah, because when we were we were in high school and we um we actually had planned on going to the East Coast. Like that was we were I all the schools I applied to were all in New York. Um and London had already planned on going to the East Coast. It was just a matter of where. Um and when he chose Virginia, I didn't know much about Virginia at all. I only thing I knew about was like Syracuse. And I like the colors. The colors were very on for us. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, we can make that work. And then uh, that actually that first summer when he went as a freshman um, was my first year in New York. So I was going to school in New York. So for me, it wasn't it wasn't far at all. Um, and so I was able to go up there and like stay with him when him and Devin um, were roommates. I would like stay with them and like I was really just with them for a lot of a lot of the like bonding processes that they had like as a team um and I was like okay this is this is different like, I don't know I was like I don't know if it's just London because every every team we've ever been on it's been like family like in high school we were all like brothers before that you know we were always together and then Virginia I was like is it always just like this like everyone you know age <laughs> Dev, Justin, like that group was special. So we had Devin on what yesterday? Yesterday talking, and he said his first first practice against London, he was like, "Oh shit, uh, I have some stuff to learn in terms <laughs> of like poise and understanding, and like you know, you guys are competition, and you could throw in Tevin's name in too. We talked, yeah. and Mark talked to Tevin what last summer, and it was nothing but love. So like, how like how are you able to? maintain that relationship and competitive nature like is that is that just something you've always done or I mean it was coming in well the way that the recruiting process happened was they were recruiting me Devin committed and reclassed up they stopped recruiting me and then towards the end of my senior my last summer in AAU coach Bennett came back and then offered me so like it was kind of already we were already kind of battling each other even without even knowing each other so 
that was a big thing for me on deciding like with, with my parents, we were kind of like, oh, do you think Devin's going to be cool? Like, how like how is this relationship going to be? Like, it's going to be tough because you guys both play the same position. Obviously, you play point guard coming out of high school. So it was kind of tough. Um, but just it just goes by, like, the people that Coach Bennett recruits. Like, obviously, we're going to have people that go up and, and battle each and every single day. But um, like 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 Masai said, we just had that brother, that, that family mentality and, and – Regardless of what was happening on the court, if I was if he wasn't playing or if I wasn't playing, and it, it, it's just kind of how it went. And he redshirted that freshman year. And, and to be honest, I feel like that's that was when we grew like the closest. Like there was never a, a time where Devin was hating or, or right. something like that. And and we stayed in a very small dorm where he saw me 24 hours out of the day. Like there was no time he was getting away from me. Like so. It was, just it just goes by the character of the of the people that Coach Bennett recruits and, and, and just under, he understands the people that's gonna help him win and regardless if that means they're playing or if they're not. But um I, I me and Dev have ne- always been close, even though we fought from from the jump. From the minute we stepped on UVA's campus, we've been fight we were fighting for minutes and um that that's probably the closest dude that I that I came to in, at UVA and, and still to this day. So what was the conversation like with you and Bennett when he inserted you right before you inserted into the starting lineup? Yeah, yeah, so we had a we uh, obviously lost to Tennessee by forty um, at Tennessee my freshman year, um, and then I guess Joe Harris had a had a talk with Coach Bennett, and then next you know we were in Florida State in Tallahassee, and after the, the practice before the the game, uh, he just kind of pulled me down into the hotel restaurant and was like, "All right, like." We're gonna, you're about to have the keys to the to the pro, like to the to the team like you're about to run a team now so like you, it's I know it's you're about to start your first ACC conference play like it's it's big you're at Florida State for your first game like it it, it was just kind of he would just kind of instill confidence in me and just was like look like we see what you can do and we just need you to do what you can at at, at all times for us and help us win games and it just kind of gave me the confidence and gave me the keys and then. That, Okay, on, it just but happened. that's that's an incredibly exciting moment, and you're yeah. known as Cali Cool. Yeah. What was your reaction? Were you just like, okay, I got this, or were you like inside? Were well, you I mean, ready me, to explode? I'm, I'm always, I'm always, like, I, I, I'm good at keeping stuff in for sure. Um, that right then and there, I was excited. I probably probably called my parents right then and there, like, like this is is all like, like, there's no looking back now. Like, I got it. So like. Um, it, it was an exciting moment. Um, I actually played extremely well that, in that Florida State game, and it kind of just took off from there. And then, um, but yeah, that that conversation it definitely changed the, the projection of my career. I feel like because it um, it, it kind of fast tracked it and, and it allowed me to start earlier than what I was expecting. So um, yeah, I, I'm a, I was blessed for that conversation for sure. <laughs> so Masai, when did you get the call that he was? Um, shit. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> like, it was probably, right literally, I actually remember he texted me, like, that, you know, right basically after he talked to his family and just, like, I'm um, starting this game. And then I start running. I start I start hyping him up. I'm like, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. All right. It begins. The dynasty begins. Mm. You know, um, and it was and it was really cool because I always made sure – in all my years at, I went to Marist College in New York for my schedule. I made sure I never had classes on Fridays or Mondays. So on Thursday nights, I would hop on the Amtrak and it would go literally straight from my campus. Well, I'd have to switch at Penn Station and then it would take me, literally drop me off at Charlottesville at the Amtrak. Oh, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> and so I'd get there Thursday night and I'd stay <laughs> with, um, you know, London and the team until Monday night. So I'd be there for like five days and I would go pretty regularly. I basically, I can, I was like socially, I was a UVA student and <laughs> right. ac- academically sure. I was a Marist student. Sure. So a lot of the people at UVA thought I was a student or something. And they would ask me if I was on the team, which I easily could have walked on. But, <laughs> but London, see, there's the difference between LeBron, LeBron and his crew is, LeBron had that kind of pull. He could have got his his homie into whatever school he was in. <laughs> LeBron could have got anybody into any school he wanted. 
Yeah, London didn't have the uh, the confidence to ask to to get me into UVA, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, fuck it. You had you had to do the getting into UVA part. I would have got you on the team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I saw the walk-ons at the time, and I, I could have held my own. <laughs> you been on Dream Machine, baby. <laughs> yeah, all the all ACC defense, but um, that was that was the exciting part for me is I, I really felt like we really weren't not spending because in high school we lived together I literally lived at London's house basically because he lived like down the street from our school and I lived way you know in a different city so we I literally lived with him and his family throughout high school pretty much and we were always together so in college you know I felt like we were able to maintain that that closeness which it has always been good for just both of us because, you know, go, especially going out of our comfort zones and going to the East Coast, you know, even though, like, he was blessed enough to be in an environment that Tony created where all the players are just, you know, the best, literally the best people that you'll ever meet and just, it was like a true brotherhood. Um, being there, you know, me being there a lot just helped make it even that much more comfortable for him and for me, I was like, all right, I, I really felt like I could trust the environment that he was in and the people he was around. And so like, you know, I was, I was always really confident and grateful that, you know, UVA provided that kind of um, family environment that they, they really like practice what they preach. But yeah, uh, T.W., you talking about high school? Yeah, no, I was going to say, bring, bring it back to, to LA high school. I remember looking at um, the crispy uh, roster, and I was like, "London is the tallest guy on the team." Yes, sir. Oh, no. Well, yeah, stat. his, so his we'll senior talk me through year. That. What was that like? Well, well for us, <laughs> well, no, you're, I was saying your senior year, you were you were actually the center, like you were actually yeah. the tallest. Yeah. But yeah. for us, we actually um, started playing against each other in like we were like eleven, ten years old. We actually started off as rivals. Cause um, like I was like the best player at my school. He was the best player at his school. He was an offensive star and I was more of a defender. So like we used to go at it <laughs> as kids. Like we literally would get in fights. Um, we would get in fights like in the games and like our parents would like have, you know, break us up and stuff. And um, we ended up, I guess, somehow going from rivals to just becoming extremely close. And then we spent like literally the rest of our childhood just as best friends like riding our bikes everywhere playing basketball um like fighting fighting older dudes yeah fighting older dudes yeah because they couldn't they couldn't beat us and they would get all frustrated Um, (laughs) so you know it was it it was like from then on literally 10 years old on it was basically inseparable just basketball and riding bikes and we were like you know we probably know each other better than you know anybody knows either of us so all right so we, you, brought up, you brought up the word rivals in la and we know the bloods and crips thing is real for for Charlottesville, i know nothing about that like was, <laughs> that, was yeah. that lifestyle like were you guys anywhere near was did you hear of it what, were there any stories we heard, we heard of it we didn't participate we just stick to the sports we definitely heard of it um miss i could tell you about somebody that used that he grew up with that was in the same household that was really in it like really yeah deep, deep in it but we we were around it like my dad still to this day doesn't like me wearing red or blue or like solid colors and stuff like that um yeah. it's a lot it's been a, it's, it's changed a lot now but back in the day like we were never walking around with any type of red on or any type of blue on regardless yeah you really you color. literally couldn't couldn't wear certain colors um i mean obviously it was not at where we spent most of our time wasn't, you know, the hot spot for it. Um, but, but it it, it, tri- it it was everywhere. It could always find you. You just had to be have a good head on your shoulders. And when I think about it, like our parents were crazy for like letting up we were like ten, eleven years old on our bikes, like riding around all of like Santa Monica down to Venice Beach. Like they we would leave in the morning then come back like right as it was getting dark and we could have been doing anything all day but i guess they just knew that we were going to be playing basketball you know and um we it ended up you know 
nothing bad ever happened except those Asian dudes that tried to fight us. But Asian uh, boy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they all, they all, they Asian boys gang. And I speak English. <laughs> yes, my bad. I apologize. Uh, yes. Hey, that shirt is funny as hell. Though, <laughs> <laughs> I speak uh, English. What area? What area? That's, 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 re- that's his retaliation to to someone saying it's the kung flu. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we grew up in Santa Monica, so um, okay, it's like near. It's like right in between Venice and yeah, I know, I know, San, I know where it is. Yeah, we grew up in Santa Monica, um, and it's a lot different now than it was when we were kids. Like it was definitely the parts. It was a lot sketchier when we were kids, um, but it's it's gentrified immensely now. So you know, we, then we ended up. I don't know how, but I ended. I was a year above London. And somehow I ended up hearing about Crespi and I ended up going there actually for football. Um, and then London ended up coming. And when London got there is when it officially became a basketball school. 